a new government broke with tradition. England went off the gold standard and devalued the pound, sacrificing international status for domestic recovery. But for the rest of the world, the financial repercussions were staggering. The shouting of frantic brokers reflects the deluge of wires from all parts of the globe. What is the pound worth today? With a stroke of a pen, those European banks, which had been holding pounds, lost millions. Reacting to what he called the earthquake in Europe, President Herbert Hoover proclaimed America's steadfastness to the gold standard. But despite official pronouncements, many Europeans feared that America would be next to devalue its currency. International investors rushed to redeem their dollars for gold. Boatloads of American gold reserves were shipped overseas. To protect the American banking system, to preserve confidence in the dollar based on the gold standard, Herbert Hoover directed the Federal Reserve System to make changes. Changes that would, quote, keep the American dollar ringing true in every city in America and in the world. The Fed responded by raising its discount rate, forcing American banks to push up the rate of interest paid to their depositors. The result, foreign investors earned more interest and were enticed to leave their money in U.S. banks. The strategy worked. Confidence in the dollar was restored and the gold drain was plugged. But there were other, more serious ramifications. Dr. Edward Bernstein, formerly principal economist, U.S. Treasury Department. Britain was the most important trading country in the world. Uh, if they uh, let the value of sterling fall, say, relative to the dollar and the franc, it meant that Britain would be exporting much more and importing much less. We would be losing exports to the British, and we would be swamped by British goods. Our farmers were already having great difficulty. Suddenly we were confronted with a big drop in the price of cotton, wheat, and other agricultural exports. This was the great blow to the United States. The loss in exports forced many manufacturing plants to close. Thousands more jobs were lost, and America was driven deeper into the Depression. We find some who are maintaining that the world has outgrown the use of gold as a basis of currency and of exchange. Tied to doctrines and traditions from the past, the Hoover administration staunchly defended the gold standard, hoping that stability in the long run would encourage recovery. But in the 1932 presidential race, Franklin D. Roosevelt questioned the wisdom of Hoover's domestic policies. That the major issue of this campaign is the economic situation. The people are now asked to judge whether the present administration has been wise in its economic policies as revealed in the president's statements and the president's actions. I propose to show that this leadership misunderstood the forces that were involved in the economic life of the country. Roosevelt was elected on a platform willing to break with the past. In his inaugural address, Roosevelt pledged to establish a sound domestic economy, even at the expense of international financial stability. Our international trade relations, though vastly important, are secondary to the establishment of a sound national economy. Within six weeks, FDR acted on this pledge. He abandoned the gold standard.